G'day and welcome. Ian Apolis here, your acrylic guru, coming at you live. Or if you're watching the replay, check the links in the description below. The colours that I'm using for this painting will be under the links in the description below. So come on over here and we'll get things happening. I've got a few brushes lined up there and I've got some right in there as well, all right? All right, so I've got my putter on brush, two inch synthetic, and I just wanna get that sky ready to map in, okay? So this is the only time, and my goodness, what am I painting? A bloody ceiling, look how much I've got on here. I don't think, hey, I just dollop and pour and go for it, eh, like a bat out of hell. Anyway, getting all that mixed together like that. All right, so I've just mapped that onto the toothed canvas. I've got it all in there, I can feel it. And now I'm just stroking it this way to neaten it up. All right, pretty easy. Now I'm just gonna wipe this brush and down here, where can I wipe it? I'll just wipe it, where can you see? Yeah, I'll just wipe it on me. This is an old backing of a curtain over the table. I tell you what, it protects it bloody well. Now I can use me paper towel. These paper rolls are towel, they're like gold to me. I don't like wasting them. Anyway, now come here and we're gonna grab the cerulean blue. See, normally I've got all my paints on that side of the can uh, palette and I'm reaching that way, but I realized if I start from this side, it won't be such a mission. Now I'm gonna pull that across my palette like that just because it's the length of my brush hairs. All right, and I wanna pick up some of this cerulean blue. So I'm pulling it onto the brush, then I'm pushing it in for those beginners who wanna know what I'm doing. It's, it's not just on the brush, it's in the brush. And this doesn't have to be a very dark blue sky. We just want it light, lovely, and real. So forgive me if I can't read all your messages when they come through. I'll try my best to see what everyone's saying. And I want this from the top uh, and coming down lighter at the bottom. So I'm gonna put it on at the top. I love this cerulean blue. I've never used it in a painting ever in all my years of painting, believe it or not. This is the first time I'm using it. And it's coming down nice and lighter at the bottom. And if I feel it's not light enough, I can always add some more white into the mix. Now I'll crisscross that to get rid of those lines. Crisscross it in. And you've got a simple, effective blue sky. I'll add a bit more white. This is the craft white. Is it going to work? Oh, I hope you didn't hear that burp. I just burped, eh? Tell you what, I've got a bit of glare here tonight. I never paint much at night. But anyway, that's looking good. Beautiful. Lovely. I love it. Fantastic. Oh, golly, hang on. Okay, I'm not gonna need that brush anymore. See, I'm gonna show you as well what I've got over here. With acrylic paints, that's just for my big brushes. When I'm live, I can sit them in there and forget about them. I've got quite a few on the table up there. Uh, you need a few pots for your water. So when you've got a brush, let's say you've got a brush full of water, I mean, full of paint, you need one to actually scrub and wash the bulk off. And then you need one to rinse it and wash it clear and then you can dab it on a towel and it's pretty well clean ready to rock and roll again but we're not going to use that one i'm going to use a happy favorite of mine where are you where are you there we go i'm going to use my fan brush and we want some titanium white up there see i said i didn't use too much um cerulean blue didn't i and a little bit of gray where's the gray there it is there so we want this some there and we're going to do some basic this sky is going to look reasonably halfway there semi-realistic okay that's what we want so we're gonna can you see that we're gonna get that on my fan brush get it right in there and we want some uh, we want a band of clouds coming all the way across the sky we want some low stratus ones mainly. They're the ones that sit on the horizon line. Now, I want um, bits broken up. So this is quite big, low stratus cloud. I'm picking up more, picking up more. And this is gonna be that big, white, fat looking eel across the horizon there. 
of a cloud. I'll come over here a bit thinner. So I've stamped it on. Sometimes you might stamp it on and start stamping. You think, hey, it's not getting on there. You've got to work with it, okay? So there we go. We've got that done. I'm going to grab a blending brush, and I want to blend that now into that cerulean blue there. I've got my roll of towel, cloth, whatever you want to use, and I want to manipulate, create turmoil, get mainly the bottom of that looking cloudy. See there, it's got all sorts of turmoil happening. It's beautiful. So many different types of clouds you can paint. Spend a, a moment or two when you're driving looking at the clouds, so long as you don't have an accident, and um, just see what's up there. And you think, oh, I like that shape. I'm going to use that one next. All right, there we go. We've got that. Now I'm going to grab another fan brush and pick up some of the other, well, not the other, the mid-tone grey, and I want some, mainly down the bottom of all this, so it'll look like the cloud's coming over us, okay? So mainly at the bottom, and spearing into it a bit. I'll stop there a bit. Now, I'll use another blending brush, because that one's got a lot of the white in it. So I want to keep the base of that grey, it doesn't matter if it fans down a little bit, and then I want to turmoil that into that white, and wipe it, because it's building up a lot. So you wipe that, and you're evenly distributing that paint throughout your cloud, creating turmoil. Well, now I'm feeling the base is a little bit hard, so I'm gonna tickle that a bit. Yeah, that's looking good, beautiful. See, now this isn't hard. You can do this, and if you feel you can't, practice it and practice it, and by golly, I'm telling you, you will be able to do clouds as lovely and as real as this, okay? Now we're gonna continue along up here a bit, just to finish the body of that cloud off. Okay, same again. I haven't been live for a while, but my son went out tonight and I dropped him off, come home, I fed the cats, and I'm like, I think I can go live. I've got another subject I want to do. So there we go, we've done that. And now we've got to add the yumminess. I'm hoping you can see that all right. I'm washing that first fan brush I picked up the titanium white with because it's all dirty and contaminated. Just wiping it. Picking up some more of the titanium white. And I want to, I better put more on there actually. There's um. It's running out. Bear with me a minute. There we go. Um, I want to put some yumminess just into that body of cloud there. Okay, so just roughly where the, anywhere there. Watch what this does. If you're the first time watching how I do my clouds, this is what I call yumminess. And it gives it that third dimension, that shape of boldness looks like it's coming at you. Now this color I've just put on, you want to blend it, but leave the glariness of it there. Don't blend it all the way to buggery. Just leave it there, but enough to... I'll show you here. Let me get the brush and hand out the way, and you'll see get turmoil going all over the place so it's not like uniform patterns in there. It's one thing we don't want is uniform patterns. Turmoil, come on. I'm very lightly here. I'm playing with it. I'm acting and feeling artistic. And sometimes, like I'm feeling, some of that grey could go back a little bit. Okay, so I'll just put that back just so you can see. Some of it can just spear up into that yumminess, just like that. Not too much, just play around with your work. And that's pretty much it for that cloud. Okay, and that's pretty much... I might put something, some gap fillers just at the top. Any regular viewer of mine knows what a gap filler is. And if you're a new viewer, you'll learn what a gap filler is too. It just fills in those gaps. Now that's a bloody gorgeous cloud, if I must say so. All right, now let's put some gap filler in there. So I'm just picking up some white. These are those ones that just sit in the sky, so you can just put it on. This doesn't need any grey, weathery stuff in it. There, we'll put one about there. See how easy it was? And just the corner, the flatness, whatever. If anything, I'm bringing it like over my head. Yeah, over my head like that. Just something like that. 
okay? And I will lightly, just lightly blend, twist and tumulate that into the blue. These are those ones that just fluff around and sit there. Oh yeah, I want a mouthful of my coffee, yeah. That one's all right, I hope you can see that. And we'll finish this one off. Now if you blend too much, you'll bugger it. So practice blending if you're new to blending this way. And once you master it, nothing will stop you. Here we go. How's that looking? Good gap fillers. Spear, I'm always spearing them in the middle, that's me habit. Like a big Chevy Belair V. <laughs> if any of you know what one of those are. All right, I haven't contaminated the bottom with all that retarded paint, which is great. I wanna take that tape off and dry the bottom half because I'm now gonna put the distant hills in, all right? So let's just grab this tape off like that. This is, was just a low tack tape. See, there's nothing under there, pretty good. The best way to do my videos is you watch them and you know what, you know when you're watching someone paint and you think, what are they doing, what's happening? Oh yeah, I can see where he's going with that. And oh yeah, you don't know what's in his mind, but he does. But the thing about tutorials like these and many others, you watch it, sit back and chill, and realize what's up ahead and what's gonna happen. And you can also realize, you know what, I'm gonna change that bit to my way. And then you know what the finished project is. So when you paint, you know exactly what it's going to be. So you can chill. It's pretty hard to paint along with a tutorial if you, unless you are set up and ready to rock and roll and go like a bat out of hell at it, okay? I do tend to paint quickly, not because I like to, it's just my habit. I just feel like I've got to start prancing along, but I've got to learn to pull back a bit, you know what I mean? So yeah, enjoy it. Sit back and chill and enjoy every tutorial. Watch it a couple of times if you need to, and you know, what sometimes you missed a few things in the first and second viewing. Alrighty, we're gonna get um, good old raw umber, bit of white, so I'll get some more white on there. Uh, raw umber, and we're gonna tone it down a bit with some lighter values as well. So I want them out one, two values, two, three values, okay. So where are we? We'll get that there like that, and also. Lo and behold, I've got my impasto. Um, now this adds volume, so if you've mixed up some paint and you think, oh no, I haven't mixed up enough, I've got to do it again, but I hope the colour matches. Mix up a blob, get yourself some impasto. I've got this from the art store, and um, what it does, it's just a white, I'll show you there, look at that. It just looks like white clag putty glue. Um, I'm going to show you with this, you add a dollop on there and it increases the volume without changing the colour, okay? What's retarded someone's asking there, it just makes that acrylic paint stay wet longer, hence I can blend my skies like an oil artist does, okay? Now I'm mixing this to a lighter value, it's like a curtain effect. You look at something, the closer it is, you can see detail. But if you look through a net curtain, you know all the little squares like fly screen? If you put it right to your face, you can look through one little square and you can see. But the further you pull that away, the more glary, uh, polluted atmosphere is between you and that object. And um, some people call it like a net curtain effect. Uh, this is pretty much the consistency I want. Sorry you're all the way over there, but I'm giving you a bit of a view around everywhere here, all right? So you're not just bored with the one shot. So we've, you can see these two lines here. That's there. So that's pretty much going to be the water line all the way there like that. So see this canvas here is all neat, uncontaminated. And that's pretty much going to be the front foregrounds of tree, okay? in front of the mountains. That's a straight line there, but it's not going to be straight for too long. And then this is coming, make sure we cover the blue, but it's sort of crooked, sort of crooked. It's trees in the background, so you can have little hairs on them if you want. Tiny little hairs up there. We'll come along here and plateau out here like that, okay? There we go. I'll zoom in a bit. Try and get that a bit level just on that area there. Okay, so now, just here, not all the way down there, that's why I mapped it in there. 
A good friend of mine, Rod Moore, he does a three-step process where he'll mix up a colour. If you're using a reference picture, he's got some good auto ideas, that young fella. And um, he, he maps everything in with the, the basic colour he's mixed on his palette. He just uses free plain colours and does all his mixing with those. Rod Moore, learn to paint with Rod Moore. And um, he can teach you some very simple but very effective ways of mapping out your art, getting your art done, how to manage your art if it becomes a business, how to sell your art, how to do all those type of things if you want to make art a full-time job, okay? He's somebody you want to look up. Just look him up, Rod Moore. Some of you might already know of him. Now, I'm just blending this, getting all the brush strokes out of it, making it looking neat like an artist would like to do, getting the top there nice and neat. I want that a bit that's it. Now I can neaten that up. Just so we're getting rid of those opaquey bits there. I hope a lot of you who are here now watched my Friday Night Live this morning, or it was this morning my time. It was a wonderful super chat we had. Everyone got to ask me questions that they wanted to and acknowledging everybody that I can. Alright, so I'm just getting this pretty much the way I want it. All right, that's that. Now I've got that color, I want it a bit darker. So we'll zoom back, come down here. Yes, all good, Ian, thank you very much, Chrissy. Now I want a bit in between the actual dark color and the light color. Alrighty, and you'll see why. So, I want to keep some of that for the darkest, but I want a bit more darker than this. So just probably just this bit here. I'm just going to pinch some of that, and we'll, we'll just see what we're getting here. Now this is neat. It's got no retarders, no mediums or nothing in there. If I want, I can put a, um, uh, a glazing gloss in there. It'll make it a bit more glossy than normal, but I'm fine with it like that. There we go, just a, maybe a little bit more darker. I'm just using that cat's tongue flat filbert. I don't know what they're really called, but that's what I'm calling it. All right, there we go. Now this is where you can see what I mapped in. So that's gonna be the darker bit. Um, lo and behold, I'll just give that a quick try. All righty, let's get some of this medium tone color on there. Let's hope it's medium enough. Oh, I wanted a, oh no, that's all right. It's going to dry darker. So I'm going to come to about here. And before we do, because I want a nice pristine waterline. So the waterline is going to be about here because it's going to have that shimmer of glare right across it. So I don't want to contaminate the bottom bit there. Okay, so we'll just put a bit of low tack tape there. Get the top bushed in. I'm just using this. These are the tops of my trees. I love this uh, filbert brush, flat filbert. It's great for doing trees and stuff. Get the top of it all mapped in and then I'll just brush it in there like that. Okay. Remember um, all my tutorials are for sale if you feel like purchasing one private message me on Facebook there's a link in the descriptions below if you're watching the replay of this and you can see just what's available for purchase now we're going to add the darker color that I've left on my palette okay so we'll just get that done are we pretty much done with that Ian oh, I think so I might just add just the slightest bit of doodars in there like this see I've just picked up some of the lighter color I'm just doing it in there to give it a bit of detail. You probably won't see much of this. Now I'm going to wash that brush and pick up the darker value now, which was just on this side. Not too, there we go. Just kill it a little bit because these are obviously a bit more forward. Okay, and We'll get these in. I'm dampening down that blob that was there. 
another bit of a blob there. Turn the brush around. It does good canopy tops. Now this is going to be darker than that, which is what I want. It's what it is in the picture, and it makes a good aspect for the art piece. I'm sorry I haven't read any of your comments. Now, so it's not so boring, I want to put air in the tops and get some just up here like that. Not everywhere, just bits and pieces. Because these are closer. Okay. Just like that. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that fly. I can't stand blow flies. Um, they make that horrible noise. All right, and this can be dried, ready to rock and roll for the next stage. So how's that looking? That's all, I think I will just, this here I'm not too happy with. So I'm going to get that into there and probably put a, like in the photo there, a bit of a dark bit. I'm gonna dry it. All righty, there we go. We'll pull the tape away and dry that. So going through a bit of tape here, I've set my brush in the tub of water. Now I've got to dry that because we want to put the tape on this half so we can get the water done. If I had done all the water with the retarder, which I need to do when I did that, it'll be dry by now and it would have been a waste of time. Just... All right, so now we're going to put the water in. So I'll grab that um, low tacking tape and just lightly put that over that line there like that. Caboodle, bang, boom. Now we want the water. What colour do we do the water? Well, like the picture, these sky, I mean, these um, land colours are reflecting in the water, so they're going to be in there for light glare across the middle, okay? So what I want to do, I've got that there. Now watch this. Remember I said about the... Um, I'm going to tighten my hinge up. Remember I said about the impasto? Well, goodness golly, I don't have enough paint there. So what I'm going to do, I'll grab the impasto. And this is great stuff. Now, I only know this because I asked the lady in the shop, do they have something that does this? And she said, yes, uh, this is impasto. So see that? I'm going to create that much of that paint by adding that to it. And that's plenty for the water. So I'm going to get that and mix it up because I need some of the medium tone and the darker tone and actual white okay so look at that I've made a big amount again fantastic look at that see you saw how much was there so that's what this done and I'm using a knife because to do this with a paintbrush is a bit cruel to the paintbrush, you know. There we go. I'll leave that there for now. I do want to get my spray bottle and just give it a pivot of H2O on there just so it'll stay wet because it's starting to get a bit muggy outside. So bing, bang, boogie. There we go. Um, oh, I need my two-inch synthetic brush. So I'm just grabbing that canvas now I want this I'm just going to do this the whole color there I'm going to dip the tip of my brush in the water you can see there make sure that's on there might look a bit nonsensey at the moment but it'll come together get all this damp onto the canvas and then it'll start to spread so I want to go that way with the brush strokes. All right, there we go, beautiful. Okay, I'm massaging it in. Good. Now I want some darker in there. <laughs> it might not look like water at the moment, but once we um Get it all going, it'll work out all right. I'll just quickly wash that. 
slap it in the flapping bar. Uh, what do we want? A bit of dark. So let's grab some more of the um, raw umber. Raw umber. Raw umber. Okay. All right, and grab some of this. I'm going to pull it in there. All right, so I've just added that darker element in there. I'm going to look at it without the glare. I don't like that bit there. Um, I think I should have put potato in it, but I'm getting there. The white's going to help. Now I've got to quickly wash that brush. So I'm going to leave the camera there on the canvas so I don't forget to move it. I'm picking up the titanium white that I've put on my board. And we want right against the horizon line, bright as buggery, really bright. We might have to give it a couple of passes. Keep it straight, straight as buggery as well. It can fan out about here somewhere. Because this is what does the darks and lights against the horizon line there. And now I want some of this. I'm going to pick up some of that as well. Um, just maybe here. Getting some glary aspects. We'll get some more. Glary aspects, glary aspects. Oh, beautiful. Right across there now. Of course, water lays straight. That's looking good. It'll come together when I pull the um, tape off. I do need the lights balking it for your thing, but I do need to grab some more white. Just I just want that horizon line area just that little bit more glary. It really needs it to make the painting pop, okay? There's simple colours in this. So this will be an excellent tutorial to watch a couple of times and just learn what's going on with it. And you'll be able to do it. Now I've got my hand on the camera so I don't forget to move it. There we go. I just need a bit more right against the horizon area there. Okay. I don't know why I'm whispering. Wipe it off there. I've got to stop doing that. And pull it through. Too much, too much, you dag. All right, that's done. The water's done. Now I'll pull the tape off. Hopefully I don't pull my paint off. No. Nah. It's good. All right, that's that. See how we get this glare. Now when we put this other tree in front, it's going to sit that back and put the water in perspective with the painting, okay? We don't need to dry the painting because we do want to kind of scratch in the island. So down here, I've got good old that's the end of that tube. I could probably get more out of that tomorrow if I drive my car over it. I reckon I can get a bit more out of that tube. Where's my new tube? There we go. Bit of forest green. And we want this dark colour as well. So that's forest green. And we want this dark colour. I hope I've got a new raw umber somewhere. I'm running out. I'm going to pick up this colour here, the straight raw umber. Maybe get a little bit of green with it. Get it dark, different value. Okay. Get your brush a bit wet so we get a good transfer happening. There we go. Now we want to work out, we want our island coming about here. Okay. And um, where are we? and coming up, leaving the top of that glare just there, just sort of hiding it and it can come off the painting there. But from here, this needs to be straight, okay? Straight, don't bring it around. Now we just map this in, so we've got that pretty well straight there. 
beautiful. See what that drying did? And we want, is that camera up there? Yes, oh good. We want some here. We want some bushes here. We're getting bushes, bushes. See that green mix with that's really helped that it's not just that color over here. It's got aspects of artistic color there. Put some air in between them, solid bit there. I'm keeping that little hint of glare in between and it'll come off there. Bloody big white bit, I hate that. All right, pick up some more now. Okay, now we'll block this in, just block it in. Block it in. And with these land masses, I find myself, I don't know about everybody else, but I find myself, you draw in between each coat of different color, they work beautiful. You don't get a problem with uh, mudding up and not quite mixing the way you want and things like that, okay? Okay, we've got that. Now what I'm going to do is just wash the brush. I'm going to grab the forest green on its own now. This is where we add the reflection in the water. There's no reflection of this because that glare is hiding it. It's the way the atmosphere is acting there. See, I'm, I'm picking up forest green here on the brush. And where are we? The main... I'm coming along here. Now that water's still wet. I want to try and come down. Start in the middle there. Just pulling it down straight down like that. This is dark. This is going to be the darker values of the shadow there. What I can do, come along here you. I'll quickly dance some green there. Just so it's going to lock it in for me. There we go. And now that shape, we want to pretty much put it on and use this brush just to pull it down. Just like that. Okay. Put it on here, solid up there and pull it down into the water. Get it on there solid and pull it down into the water. Just, oh, look at that white there, you. Okay, get him down there like that. Let me look in the monitor. Okay, it's looking a bit weird here, so we'll get that bit there. Once this gets other colours in it as well, it'll look great. All right, so what colour are we going to use? The middle tone there. I'm picking up the... Um, I'm going to wet that brush as well. So come down here so you can see what I'm doing. There's the raw umber. Is it raw umber? I've lost the tube now. Yes, raw umber. And I want a bit of um, white marble with it as well. So see what I did there? Or maybe I can put that on later. But get your brush downwards and we want some trees. You put this on. Now make sure this paint is wet enough to transfer, not wet so it's going to run. And we want some trees. So get it on there and twist and give yourself a tree. Now, lo and behold, that is clashing with there. I don't want it to clash, so I want that darker. So I'm gonna wash that brush right out again and use the darker. I'm not gonna add, what I can do is where's my black? Oh, come on, where's the black? I'll just use burnt umber, that's dark. So there we go, we've got some burnt umber, big skin on the tube there. So I'm going to get the burnt umber. Where are we? Here it is, burnt umber, this will be darker. You want it darker too, because it's more forward and it's in front of the light, not on the lights behind it. We're, we're between this and the light. Okay, we'll leave that one there. And we just want some, you now twist this so you get nice skinny trees. And we want them mainly all canopying within that colour there. I need more water in that. I feel it's just not transferring enough. 
So we got some there. And we just put some. We're putting the, the trunks in first, and then we'll put some simple but effective um, foliage on them. Canopies and foliage. And if we need be, some um, shrubs and bushes. Nice and damp. A lot of this is just gonna get covered up, so I'm not gonna go too detailed with these. Uh, we want some here coming out of there. Okay, there, nice and damp. Just so it'll come off your brush nice, quick and easy. Get some together. Twisting it as you go, that way it transfers a lot easier as well. I hope you can see that, looking in the monitor, yeah, you can see that. And we've got quite a few over here as well. Oh, he's a bit fat, isn't he? He had a meat pie for lunch. Now, grab your synthetic two-inch putter on a brush. I'm going to grab that. I'm just washing it. We've got to get some of these reflections in the water. So boom, 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 boom. Give it a quick twist as you do it. Now we'll just give this a, a light pull. Is it going to move it or is it drying? That'll do it. Just to blur them up a bit. There we go, I'll do it like that. Simple but effective. Uh, where are we? We've got some there. Got some here. It's pretty much coming all the way off the painting because sometimes the reflections, depending where your eye is, they're longer or shorter in the water than the actual solid subject up above. Okay. That's the thing with lives, eh? You got to, I've got to keep going. I can't turn the camera off and put some in, so I'll, I'll do some more here real quick. Try and keep some back and forwards from each other. Try and keep the tops of them very skinny. And there we go. We'll just do it at that. And we'll put those ones in the water as well. See what happens when it's not wet enough? but when it's wet, it comes off beautifully. Okay, and we'll scrub them down as well. That'll do. All right, now we've got our green there. Remember I had the green? Did I have the camera up there? Yes, I did. Uh, we've got the brown. Okay, so we'll give that a quick dry. Now, what do we want there? We want pretty much that, um, the dark. So I'm gonna mix up a bit of, um, I really need the black. There's me raw umber, which is all here. And I just want the slightest black to get it dark. So it's not gonna clash with the mountain, but it's gonna be dark enough to stand out. And we're gonna use this just for our um, canopy of those trees there, okay? Pretty simple. Got my hand on the camera so I don't forget to move it. All right, so they're pretty naked. Let's just see how, what, how, what this color's gonna look like, okay? And then we can, if we want, see, it's not clashing with none of that background there, it's great. Now see here, just do that. Put it on and do that, leave it, that's it. It's that simple. Same here. Canopy that, like that. Oh, I'm using the wrong, I just went into the burn dummy, you dilly dilly. Make these canopies. They're gonna clash a bit, but I'm gonna put the slightest of highlight on them just to distinguish different ones, okay? See like that, just pull it down. Don't think about it, just do it. Okay, I'll put some of these a bit close, but not to worry, I'll, I'll separate them with some 
highlighted areas. Just umbrella shapes, simple umbrella shapes. Simple but effective. It's going to give you that aspect of um, bullshit to your painting when people look at it. Now we'll just quickly add some of that in there as well. Bang down here. I don't want to this area here, I don't want to kill that because it's going to add that sense of niceness to your reflection. There we go. Looking all right so far. Okay, now I'm going to wash that brush. It'll be going for 57 minutes. All right, now I'm just going to grab... Let's just say, oh, before we do stop, I've got to get the uh, forest green and a little bit, <coughs> where are you, of cad yellow light, okay? Two seconds. So we want to put some bushes within this brown stuff. Some there, just not, not too much, just enough to sink stuff back, some there, some here, got dark in there still, plenty of dark in there, okay, boom, and we want the slightest, watch this, where are you, the slightest bit of cad yellow light, Just so we get that hint of what's in front and what's behind each other there. Okay. So I need a little bit more. And like I said, there we go. Oh, a bit more, come on. Good enough. Now that green we just put on there, we're just going to separate that. Let this come down into the darkness a little bit. Don't kill all that forest green you put on there. These are just like conifer trees, small small conifer shrubs or um, golden diosmas, something like that in front there. And you can get this colour and probably put those elements in the shadow as well. Just like that. I might... The, the the watercolor's lighter, so I'm just adding a little bit more yellow to that so it'll stand out. There we go. Nothing better than having a great reflection, is there? All right, I'm going to wash the brush and quickly fix those trees up at the top now. So I'm just grabbing the um, dark colour I use with the... I'll show you slightest bit of white, see there? So that's the colour we did for the canopy. Everything's dry up there. And we'll sort out what's in front and what's behind, okay? I'm going to put my glasses on. So this is obviously more detailed than back here. You'll have more time than me to do something like this. So I'm assuming, boom, 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 boom. Where are we? Don't forget which paint you're using. Now I want to put this to the left side, leaving dark between them. Just here and there. And I'm going to look in the monitor just to see if that's doing what I want it to do. Yes, it is. So. Got that many paints on my palette, I'm almost ready to smash the brush into the wrong colour. There we go, we're just putting stuff behind and in front of everything there. Now don't feel you've got to do it this quick, you can take your time and put more detail in it. And we'll put some of this 
in there as well. Maybe with a little bit more white because it's the reflection and it's, there we go, just so it'll stand out more. There we go. Where are we? Yeah, there, there. Just any old where. Sun's down here. Okay. Am I zoomed in, zoomed out? I've got, I forgot the dark. Where's the dark? Sorry, before I finish there. The black, I'm getting, I'm getting the black. I've just washed the brush. And where this is hitting the water, I want some black dancing across the water line here. Gingerly, but slyly scrumbled up within there as well. Okay, some down in here. Without it, it'll look like there's no eyeliner on the girl with all that makeup on her face. That's just the way I interpret it. I don't want to offend anybody, it's just, you know what I mean, it's looking like that dark element is just missing. And when we put the white waterline there, or a slight white waterline, you will, it'll set this back and you think, yeah, that's what it needed. Okay, so where's my knife? Like I've showed you before, grab a clean knife, spread it like butter about very thinly, but evenly. The better your knife, the better the job. Okay, your knife's full of muck, just wipe it clean. Okay, and we just want the thinnest roll on there. Look at that. Can you see that roll? It's very thin. And we want to get the waterline here now very thinly. Oh, it's a bit heavy. I can always kill it down. And we want to sink those reflections as well, but leaving these lines as straight as possible. These are what sink those reflections down. Get a bit more. I want something just out here. Yay. Now they look a bit heavy right there. So what I like to do with that is grab the best flat brush, dampen it, and get all the water off it. So it's damp. Get your straight edge stick and just try and turn it into film if you can. Let's see if we can do that. Wipe the build up off. This is just a repair. That's why I hate using knives, eh? No, I think I'm going to make it more blobbier. So what I'll do, I'll just kill it down with a darker tone. Where's my knife? Where'd I put my knife? There it is. I'll grab some of the darker colour. And I'm hopefully I'm going to be able to kill it down a bit. Let's see. Yeah, just got rid of that cartoony, glary blob, you know. I hate it. Doesn't have to be stark white. All right, that's looking okay. Yes, that'll do it. Now, what we need to do is grab our autograph brush. Autograph here. Check out the links in the description below. There's quite a few there to knock yourself out with, eh? And we'll whack a frame on this as well, just to see how she looks. I reckon it'll do this subject a bit of justice. Lovely frame with the inner white border, always does a painting justice. There you go, they look quite good in a frame landscape, waterscape. So I'll uh, get rid of that out the way there. So it's not hindering. Not too shabby, hey? We've got a beautiful semi-realistic sky 
and we've got the dusk in the background there a bit of a mid-ground island here or foreground island actually you can keep going with this with any sort of subject like i said a element in the sky of a moon or a sun or something like that all right good stuff all right hope you like this subject and if you do tell your friends but if you don't tell everybody all right all the best goodbye good luck and good on you uru from the guru